agreement. A great deal of agreement. We had to all be on the credentials committee at the Democratic Let's National Convention. Come on, it's, let me let me turn to that. Uh, and Donna, we did see um, a slightly new phase in the campaign uh, this week. Both Senator Dodd and Senator Leahy calling on superdelegates to end this race. I'm not sure the Obama campaign really welcomed uh, those calls. But beyond that, we saw Senator Clinton's response today. Forget about it. We are going to the convention on the Credentials Committee. That's how this is going to end. Well, I think we have an exit strategy in the Democratic Party to end the primary uh, season on June 10th, and sometime before, I think, the Why June 10th? Well, oh, that's the end of the primary season, uh, based on the rules. And after all, this is about the rules. So there's a little give there. The last contest is June 3rd, but you're after saying... Puerto that... Rico, but the official date to hold a primary caucus is June 10th. So sometime before July 4th, I am I am clear that the superdelegates will break one way... The uncommitted will break one way or another. If you're committed, you can also change your mind. And this thing will end. This notion of bringing this fight on to the convention is not a wise idea. And I think whoever is coming up with this new strategy is not looking at the math again. Credential... Uh, Howard Dean has already appointed 25 members. The states will send three persons, three people to the convention. On the convention, on the credentials committee, Obama has one more state. So, so far more, far more. So, do the math. This is not healthy. It's not what the Democrats. But, would but like. this is this is an important point. Let me just press this. You're saying that the credentials committee, unless there's some dramatic change, some dramatic uh, Obama collapse, that Senator Clinton can't win at the credentials committee. Uh, you, 48 states comply with the rules. Why would they all of a sudden change the rules? Clearly, Florida and Michigan will be dealt with. Uh, we can do that as a rules amendment, a charter amendment. The credentials committee could take it up to give them, uh, you know, some floor credentials. But we should not tear the party but up. George, just you have some sympathy for Senator point. Clinton on this. Well I, well, I do. There's a four-letter F word that's, oh, dri right. that's <laughs> driving your party crazy. It's fair. Oh, I used okay. to forbid my children to use it for fear they'd become liberals. They are trying to, to make this so exquisitely fair you can't come to a conclusion. If you had a few winner-take-all primaries, if you had diversity, big word in the Democratic Party, and allowed diverse rules then in the states, then you'd have a, a nominee, but that'd probably be Mrs. Clinton. But for now, what is the rush? Mrs. Clinton, uh, three weeks ago we didn't know Reverend Wright from a hell of beans. Uh, no, there I, are maybe other there, surprises. I, I, George, I will... I will sort of agree with you. I don't think there is a rush right now at this particular moment. I think, though, that the party elders or the party leaders, now there may be a little bit of a contradiction in terms, Democratic <laughs> Party leaders, but to the extent that there are there still There is no real leaders, center of gravity. No, there isn't. The but I think that people like Al Gore and John Edwards and Howard Dean need to step in not to stop the election, not to stop the primaries, but to make sure that we tone down the rhetoric, because that is what is really helping McCain and hurting Democrats right now. I just, I, I talk to a fair number of people on both sides, not, not political, but actually, you know, real people out there, uh, and I think it's terribly important. You know, clearly, Obama has the ability to just shut this thing down, to shut out Florida and Michigan, get enough of the superdelegates. But the trouble with that is, is it would very much hurt him in the general election, because there are a lot of grassroots Hillary supporters. A lot of them feel that she was treated very unfairly, grotesquely unfairly by the media. And if this is done by running out the clock, by not giving a chance for people who support her to be heard, then some of them will walk. You know, but you Michigan, know the problem? But the problem is simple. Senator Clinton was supposed to win this. She was supposed to have finished up the contest on February 5th. They had no post-Super Tuesday strategy. They ran out of money. She came back from behind. She won Florida. I mean, she won Texas. She won Ohio. But there's no reason to demonize and to disgrace the Democratic Party uh, to prolong this race longer than... You're doing insider speak. I think, I think I'm that talking that... about what the large number of people, uh, many of them women, but not all, uh, who, just feel, who, just, <laughs> but who just feel that, that this hasn't been done fairly. I if Obama Paul, gets Paul... the nomination fair and square, if there's your word, then they will come around. But if it's done... <clears throat> If it has even the slightest echo of Florida 2000. But, 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 but on either but side with it. Paul is, yes, Paul is of right in the sense that everybody must see this as 
fair. And I think that Hillary's strategy, Hillary Clinton's strategy, with regard to talking about a credentials fight, is basically to keep things open long enough so that she has a vague possibility, and this is a but very it's, tiny it's possibility, of prevailing on a couple of states. Wait and see and if something making... happens to Obama, because you brought up the issue of Florida 2000. I think that weighs heavy on all Democrats, especially superdelegates. Here's the fundamental problem for the Clinton campaign. There is just, there's no reasonable possibility that by June 10th, she is going to be ahead in the pledge delegates. And I believe, and I want to put this question to Donna, I just think that the majority of superdelegates who are remaining out there simply can't in their gut vote to overturn the superdelegates, given the Florida history. That's true. That, I mean, that's just the, that's the gospel truth. But then, On the other hand, I, I just want to answer Paul so that, you know, we go out of this okay. Nobody is telling her to get out. I would like to uh, see we her. We just heard a couple of people. <laughs> they like to, you know. They're speaking, but the party itself is not saying, well. you know, get out. No one has said get out. I have been behind Senator Clinton's efforts to restart her campaign, change her voice, get herself back on in, in groove. But it ends in June. I, I think this notion that and we this, go on to all this is a it bad idea. It needs to be that Florida and Michigan, those states themselves, had made the decisions with regard to what their fates are going to be with regard to these uh, these nomination uh, elections. Uh, it's not the Obama people who are pushing this, uh, and it is over. I mean, Florida and and Michigan are not going to hold nominating conventions, and as a result, uh, if this is uh, if this is going to be contested all the way to the to the convention uh, in August. Uh, it's going to bode very, very badly for I, I, the I, I, party. I guess, George, the, the counter-argument to what I just laid out is that this that Senator Clinton not only wins Pennsylvania, but wins Pennsylvania big. And then May 6th becomes the key date. Mm -hmm. Indiana and North Carolina vote. If she wins both, then it will create some kind of a chemical chain reaction. People will have vast second thoughts about Barack Obama. But if he wins one or both on May 6th, the superdelegates break. If, if, if. Let's let it play out. If she, suppose she wins Pennsylvania, thereby having won every large state except Obama's Illinois. And suppose she wins Indiana and North Carolina. Then we have a question. I do not claim to understand the party's mind <laughs> of the Democrats. But if they have superdelegates, they are either redundant, if they're merely to ratify decisions already taken, or they're supposed to be independent to make just this kind of judgment. He's got numbers, she's got momentum, let him decide. And that, that will be a very difficult, but many of us are prepared to make that decision in June. I think the notion that we will allow this to go throughout the summer to give the Republicans a, a leg up is, is, is erroneous. And right, now, the decision. No, right, now, it helps, now. right now it helps both candidates, George. It's making them both better candidates. It's keeping enthusiasm and excitement up. But there is a point, there is a tipping point at which this becomes very negative. Uh, and John McCain is getting a very large free ride out of this. Uh, another month or two, and this is going to and turn And George, back. he's been using it well the last couple of weeks to move to both unify his party and move over to the center. And, we're, and to introduce himself again. He's a man who's been very much in the public eye for a very long time. However, he now is laying out his themes in an orderly manner because he's getting this free ride and this biography tour that he's on, what, next week? Yes, the ad he has out, very powerful ad, uh, focusing on him in the Hanoi Hilton. This is, uh, he, he's not making a misstep yet. And we will show that ad in the round, in the green room where all you guys are going to go on and continue this debate. You can join in later on abcnews.com. And you can also get the latest political news and analysis there every day from The Note.